assalamu alaikum friends this is roshan ali today i will be showing you some tricks and mnemonics for drawing the structures of carbohydrates and today's video is about the aldose sugars as you people know that it is very difficult to memorize the structures of carbohydrates and to memorize the structures of carbohydrates you must know which carbons in which sugars have hydroxyl groups on the right side and which of the carbons have hydroxyl groups on the left sides so today i am going to tell you the tricks and mnemonics for memorizing which carbons have hydroxyl groups on which side of the carbon so let's begin bismillahir rahmanir rahim as you people know that aldoses have aldehyde group at their first position and aldoses have four types of carbons in them the first carbon is always the aldehyde carbon and then we have another carbon which is at the terminal end of the structure of the carbohydrate that is the last carbon the third type of carbon is the second last carbon which is also called as the penultimate carbon and you can also call this carbon as dial carbon because the orientation of hydroxyl group on this carbon tells us about whether this sugar is a d isomer or an l isomer and the remaining carbon or carbons are called the fourth type of carbons let me tell you that triose doesn't have this fourth type of carbon so the structure of the triose would be like this it has all the three types of carbons that is aldehyde carbon the last carbon and the penultimate the second last dl carbon but it doesn't have this fourth type of carbon so now let me tell you about how many carbons do we have in each type of aldose sugars at this position Trioses do not have any carbon over here. Tetroses have one carbon at this position. Pentoses have two carbons, while hexoses have three carbons at this position. Let's compare the structures of trioses, tetroses, pentoses, and hexoses. Mnemonics will apply to the red-colored hydroxyl groups. That is the fourth type of carbons, and these carbons are missing in three-carbon sugar. That is triose. The mnemonics I am going to tell you will help you draw the D isomer of the sugar. Hmm. Then how will you draw the L isomer of that sugar? It's so easy. just draw the mirror image of the d isomer that's it that was the mistake that i made in my last video the link to my last video is given here i have made some rules for memorizing the structures of aldose sugars so let's learn these rules here in this slide these are the structures of aldoses This is the structure of triose and it has only one sugar. These are the structures of tetroses and there are two tetrose sugars. We have four types of pentose sugars and there are eight hexose sugars in aldoses. The first and most important thing for my tricks and mnemonics is that you must memorize the names of these sugars and their group names. For example, you must know that glyceraldehyde is a triose and in tetrose we have two sugars that is erythrose and triose and you must know that which sugars are pentoses and which sugars are hexoses. In this video I am only showing you the tricks to memorize the structures of these sugars not how to memorize the names or not how to know which group has which sugars to memorize the names of these sugars and their group names you can search on Google or on YouTube I hope you will find some mnemonics for it to memorize the names of these sugars I have made three rules for memorizing or drawing the structures of aldose sugars so let's see rule number 1 Rule number 1 says that sugars that start with letter R have all the hydroxyl groups on the right side and those sugars that start with letter L have all the hydroxyl groups on the left side 
here by all the hydroxyl groups i mean the fourth type of carbons which were missing in triose sugars as we know that triose sugars do not have these fourth kinds of carbons therefore we don't need any mnemonics for the triose sugars to memorize rule number 2 will not be applied to the group in which these sugars are found so let's search for sugars that starts with either letter r or letter l in each group as you can see you do not need any mnemonics for memorizing the structure of glyceraldehyde glyceraldehyde has only three carbons and the carbon in the middle have hydroxyl group in this structure on the right side this is a d-glyceraldehyde if you rotate this hydroxyl group to the left side it will become an l-glyceraldehyde so whether you draw this hydroxyl group on the right side or on the left side this will be the same glyceraldehyde only its enantiomeric form will change as you can see our rule said that you have to find sugars that starts with either letter r or letter l as you can see in tetroses we do not have any such sugars that starts with letter r or with letter l same is the case with hexoses there are no sugars in hexoses that starts with letter l or with letter r in pentoses ribose is the sugar that starts with letter r and lexose is the sugar that starts with letter L. As R stands for right, it means that all the fourth kinds of hydroxyl groups in this sugar will be on the right side of the structure. While in lexose, all the hydroxyl groups of that are attached to the four kinds of carbons will be on the left side. So R stands for right and L stands for left. Now rule number two. Rule number two says that alphabetically first sugar has all the hydroxyl groups on the right side and alphabetically last sugar has all the hydroxyl group on the left side. This rule will not be applied to pentoses group two because rule number one has already been applied to those sugars. Rule number two will be applied to tetroses and hexoses only. So let's look for the alphabetically first and last sugars in each group separately. First, let's hide ribose and lexose because we have already learned the mnemonics for these two sugars. Now let's look for the alphabetically first and last sugars. In tetroses, erythrose is the alphabetically first sugar. In hexoses, allose is the alphabetically first sugar. So in these two sugars, the hydroxyl groups attached to the fourth kind of uh, carbon will all be on the right side. This is triose and it is alphabetically last sugar in tetroses. This one is telose and it is also the alphabetically last sugar in hexoses. So the hydroxyl groups attached to the fourth kind of carbon in these sugars will all be on the left side. Now rule number three. In rule number three, you need to memorize these things first. R stands for right, L stands for left, D stands for dextro, which is also right. M stands for minus. Minus sign is used for Liu sugars, that is the uh, those sugars that rotate the plane polarized light to the left side. So those are called as Liu, and they are represented usually with a minus sign. So here I will use M symbol for minus, which would mean that hydroxyl group here will be on the left side. Another thing that you must memorize is that all vowels would mean left except U. And all consonants will mean right, that is hydroxyl group on the right side, except L and M. The third thing that you must know is that we will use Y as a vowel instead of a consonant. So remember, Y here in our rules is a vowel, not a consonant. So Y wherever comes in our rule number three will be used for the hydroxyl groups to the left side. This rule is applied to the rest of the sugars. Note, for this rule, we need to take the first two letters from pentoses and first three letters from hexoses. First, let me hide all those sugars that we have already learned how to draw. Let's first take the first two letters from arabinose. A, R. These are the first two letters in arabinose. And these are the two hydroxyl groups to which we need the mnemonics. According to our rules, all vowels mean left. 
So here in arabinose in AR, A is a vowel. So hydroxyl group on this carbon will be on the left side. And R stands for right. So hydroxyl group on this carbon will be on the right side. Now take the first two letters from xylose, X, Y. According to our rules, X is a consonant, which means that hydroxyl group on this carbon will be on the right side. And Y, as I told you in the previous slide, that Y here in our rule will be considered as a vowel, not as a consonant. So as it is vowel and all vowels being left except U, so Y here means that hydroxyl group on this carbon will be on the left side. This is an exceptional sugar. In this sugar, we will not take A as our first letter. So we will start from L and we will take the three letters starting from L. That is L, T, R. So L means left. So this carbon will be on the left side and T is a consonant. So hydroxyl group will be on the right side and R means right. So the hydroxyl group here will be on the right side. The first three letters of glucose are G, L, U. G is a consonant, so hydroxyl group here will be on the right side. L means left, hydroxyl group is on the left side. And U is an exceptional vowel, so the hydroxyl group here will be on the right side. The first three letters of mannose are M, A, N. M means minus, used for Leo, which means the hydroxyl group is on the left side. A is a vowel, hydroxyl group is on the left side. And N is a consonant, which means the hydroxyl group here is on the right side. The first three letters of GULUS are G, U, L. G is a consonant, hydroxyl group is on the right side. U is an exceptional vowel, so it doesn't mean that hydroxyl group will be on the left side. So here U means that the hydroxyl group is on the right side. L means left, so hydroxyl group is on the left side. The first three letters of I dose or I D O. Both I and O are vowels, so hydroxyl group on both these carbons will be on the left side, while D means dextrose, so here the hydroxyl group will be on the right side. The first three letters of galactose or G A L. G is a consonant according to the rule number three, so the hydroxyl group will be on the right side on this carbon. A is a vowel and L means left. So hydroxyl groups on these two carbons will be on the left side. Remember, this altrose is an exceptional case for rule number three because here we are not taking the first letter A and we are starting from the second letter that is L. Okay, do we need uh, any mnemonics for a triose? No, we don't need any mnemonics for trioses because it has only one sugar with two enantiomers that is D and L. The name of that sugar is glyceraldehyde. The structure is, this is the D form because OH on epinaltimate carbon is on the right side. By rotating this hydroxyl group to the left side, we now have the L isomer of the glyceraldehyde. As we don't have four type of carbon in this sugar, therefore we cannot make any new ultradrioses out of it. Now let's see the summary. So that was all for today. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.